Hi everyone, I'm Jimmy from Media Tech Taiwan. First, I would like to thank all the collaborators to accomplish this great work. Deploying image deblurring across mobile devices, a perspective of quality and latency. We realize that there is a large gap for algorithm developers to deploy their deep learning network on mobile device. For example, you train your network in TensorFlow and then convert it into TensorFlow Lite format. However, you find some operation could not be successfully converted, so you need to modify them. After you are done, you want to run your network with any API framework for better acceleration. Again, you find some operations not supported by any API. The iteration repeats again. Finally, the network is evaluated on mobile device with any API. But the latency is not good enough due to the operation that are not accelerated in your device. In that case, you may need to change your network again and again, which is very annoying. It's very difficult for algorithm developers to deploy their networks on mobile devices successfully. Therefore, in our paper, first, we provide a practical guideline to search portable network architecture for mobile devices. Second, we check the effectiveness of popular network optimization techniques on image deblurring tasks. Last but not the least, we provide in-depth analysis from the perspective of both image quality and the latency for image deblurring. Then, what's the guideline to deploy your deep learning networks on mobile devices? This figure shows you an example of our four-step flow to deploy image deblurring on Oppo Reno3 5G mobile phone. We first design network architecture which fulfill our quality metric. Then, we place those operations which give poor latency in the selected network. Finally, we apply network pruning and the quantization on this network. With this guideline, we also won NTIRE 2020 Image Deblurring Challenges on Smartphone Track. In the following pages, I will show you more details about our proposed method accompanied with some results. Before going into details, I would like to explain experiment setting first. In our paper, we choose three mobile devices equipped with deep learning accelerators. And this figure illustrates the software stack from algorithm development to deploying on mobile devices. We use TensorFlow to train our network because it can be converted to TensorFlow Lite format easily which is widely support on mobile devices. We use TensorFlow Lite benchmark tool provided in TensorFlow repository to run inference on mobile devices. For the framework beneath TensorFlow Lite, we adopt a unified framework NN API and joint neural network API. NN API is designed for accelerating deep learning operation, which is widely supported among Android mobile devices. In the first step of our proposed guideline, we search for network architecture with best quality metric. We select network architectures widely used in image enhancement and the restoration task. They have large diversity in architectures. For fair comparison, we slightly modify the channels or layers of the network to align roughly the same computational complexity. As shown in the table, UNET gives the best PSNR. Therefore, we choose UNET as our best architecture. You may notice that the latency of UNET are highly inconsistent when deployed across platform. This phenomenon could be solved in the next step. In the second step, we look into the operation of the network to find the bottleneck of the latency. In UNET, we found transpose convolution is not accelerated through NN API. 
in some device and thus give the approval latency. Fortunately, this problem could be solved by replacing transpose convolution with other similar functions, for example, depth to space or recessed bilinear operations. These operations are all responsible for assembling. Therefore, the result network gives a trade-off between quality and the latency. One is free to choose a network that fulfills your requirement. In our case, we choose UNET with recessed bilinear and the p-value operations. The finding in this step is that latency pitfall could be mitigated by leveraging operations with better portability. You can refer to the table in our paper for more, for more detailed description. In the third step, we apply network quantization and the pruning techniques which are provided by MediaTek's Neuropiler toolkit. We also experiment with both 8-bit and 16-bit quantization and the different MAC reduction target for network pruning. Since any API does not support 16-bit integer data type, and we could not find enough information to deploy 16-bit inference by preparatory SDK in MET30 Pro and the Pixel 4. Hence, we only report the result from MediaTek Neuropilot SDK for 16-bit fixed point inference. One thing worth noting, network optimization do not consistently reduce the latency across platform, which are not predictable. You can find more detailed discussion in our paper. In this final step, we combine both quantization and the pruning to optimize the network to get better latency. Finally, we get to optimize network. One is better in PSNR and the other is better in latency. This page shows the visual result of different optimization techniques. In addition to PSNR drop, AB quantization also show quality degradation compared with 16-bit quantization and the floating point result. This implies that AB quantization, which is widely used in classification detection, but is not enough for image restoration and the enhancement. For network pruning, there is a trade-off between quality and the complexity. You could choose any you want based on your requirement. In the following pages, I will summarize some important takeaways. Hope it would be helpful to those interested in deploying on mobile devices. Here are the summarization of our findings. Everyone should notice these issues when deploying your network. First, the latency are highly inconsistent when deploying across mobile devices. Fortunately, the latency pitfall could be mitigated by leveraging operation with better portability. However, network optimization do not consistently reduce the latency across platform. Last but not the least, the latency does not scale linearly with input resolution. At the end, I will recall what have we done in this paper. First, we conduct a search of portable network architecture for better quality and the latency trade-off. Second, we present the effectiveness of quantization and the pruning for image deblurring. Third, we also provide in-depth analysis for both latency and the image quality across mobile devices. Thank you all for listening to our talk. You can learn more about MediaTek, our newer pilot SDK, and the Dimensity 1000 chipset from the link of a QR code. Thank you.